National Architecture Week, a time to gawp at the sensuous curves and elegant lines of Britain's flamboyant Grand Projet, to rightly celebrate the buildings that have made British architecture renowned around the world. But it's easy to make the glamorous buildings look sexy. What about the buildings that do the filthier jobs, like power stations or oil refineries? Let's get dirty. Our landscape is littered with these humdrum buildings. They're essential to our modern world, but do they have to look so dreary? Just because they have modest budgets doesn't mean they can't have lofty ambitions. I'm off to hunt for the unsung heroes of British architecture. New buildings which may do routine jobs, but don't half do them with panache. We'll start on the south coast of England. Nomination one, Portsmouth's incinerator. Or the Portsmouth Energy Recovery Facility, as it's officially known. It was created by architect Jean-Robert Mazot, an absolute poet of incinerators back in France. Now the key thing with these buildings is that nobody wants to spend money on them. They're the lowest of the low. So the architect has to be really careful what kind of volumes and what kind of materials they use. It's got to be cheap, but it's got to be aesthetically pleasing. Mazo has built a great thrusting arch out of the main structure holding up the building and used polycarbonate for the exterior, which is terribly fashionable at the moment because it's cheap, tough, translucent and looks fantastic. It's a blatantly industrial building, but the architect almost turned it to his advantage using very plain Jane materials like this corrugated steel you might find on any old Ikea on the end of town, or this wire mesh that rises up to the heavens. It's the way he uses it that creates a kind of industrial, minimalist chic about it. This cathedral of incineration gobbles 165,000 tonnes of Hampshire's rubbish each year, but it's managed to avoid looking rubbish. I like it, I like it. The building has even won the Portsmouth Civic Society Design Award this year. But have the locals celebrated its magnificence? Oh, I've never seen it, I didn't even know. <laughs> I've driven past it a few times, but I've never even noticed it was there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, it's not exactly the talk of the town, but that's a good thing. It's an incinerator that isn't an eyesore. If I had to have an incinerator built next door to me, this is the one I'd have. And so off to Scotland for another wallflower that nobody's noticed, until now. Nomination two, the JKS workshops in Clydebank. Woohoo! Yes, these are warehouses, but they aren't like the millions I've seen blighting the country. A recent report found that as Britain becomes more and more of a service economy, we can expect to turn into a nation of giant sheds. The real challenge is how to turn what could be cheap old eyesores into things of beauty. Like here, where they've dressed a big box warehouse in a pinstripe suit. It's added some sharp looks to a plain bit of town, a great example of the design-led regeneration of Clydebank. This project has revolutionised just what box warehouses can be. And look, it's our old friend Polly Carboner, looking good as usual. But all this fancy gold panelling and patterns for a warehouse? No matter how limited the scope of the architecture seems to be, you can always make architecture out of it. The architects here were inspired by a former sewing machine factory in the area. One day we just accidentally came across that sort of stitching pattern thing you could get for the Singer sewing machines. When you don't recognise it immediately, it looks like an ornamental pattern. Only I like the idea that there are some ladies who have been working in the factory go along and they go like, oh, hang on a minute, I maybe recognise this. Normally warehouses are bland and anonymous, but this turns anywhere into somewhere. Top marks from Dykoff. And lastly, we fly off to Dublin, where British-born architect Tom de Poer has come up with... Nomination three, Clontarf Pumping Station. Four. <laughs> Sewage works aren't exactly venerated. Here, the public have even graffitied it. Can't they see this building as a beauty? De Puer wanted the building to have the presence of a town hall, proud of its backroom role in the secret workings of the city. And where there's muck, there's, well, copper. The copper scales have swiftly stained a kind of bluey grey, but that's OK, it's what the architect wanted. He wanted the building to somehow reflect the copper domes of central Dublin's Georgian architecture. 
No drain pipes on the outside means that when it rains, which happens rather a lot in Dublin, the building's angular shape channels water in a cascade. It's really one giant water sculpture. The flushing exterior neatly symbolizing cunningly all the dirty blushing that goes on inside. Ugh. There's nothing but machinery in here, but the designer's lavished architecture. Look at these crazy angles and the rough and ready details going on. It's a reminder that we used to make an effort with buildings like these. Think of the amazing architecture of London's drainage system by Joseph Bazalgette. The Victorians may have been prudish, but they knew how to make even things like sewage sexy. There's no reason why we can't do the same again, is there? It may just be a pumping station, but why shouldn't it have ambition? In fact, it's exactly these kinds of buildings. Sewage plants, incinerators, big box warehouses. Buildings with a real image problem that needs architecture the most. That's what unites my three choices. So far, the wider architecture world isn't acknowledging them. So I propose an alternative to the Sterling Prize and its fancy equivalents. How about the Dykoff Award for the least glamorous but best design buildings? No glitzy award ceremony, but the knowledge that at least one architecture critic appreciates you. I love you so.